A faith walker is one who focuses not on fear or on the facts, but focuses on their faith. More importantly, their faith in God and the word of faith, Church of Jesus Christ. We are faith walkers. And no matter what comes against us in 2021, we are not going to be afraid. We're not going to worry about the facts. We are going to focus on our faith because we are faith walking forward fearlessly into our future. Join us 2021. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome once again to the Word of Faith Church located in Riverdale, Maryland. We're also on Facebook Live. We're on Zoom. We're everywhere. Amen. We thank you for joining us this morning where our founders are Pat, Dr. Bishop Larry Frazier Sr., First Lady Dr. Anita C. Frazier, our senior pastor, Dr. Napoleon Bradford, and our first lady, Dr. Karen Bradford. We welcome you and we thank you for joining us again this morning. Open your hearts and your minds to receive because the table is going to be spread. We have so much in store for you. God have a lot in store for you this morning. So come prepared and ready to receive what God have in store for us this morning. Amen. We welcome you once again and thank you for joining us. At this time, we're going to have the scripture read by Minister Thomasina Onward. And after Minister Thomasina Onward finishes with the scripture, we will have the prayer by Minister Tyrone Onward. Amen. Thank you and welcome again. Greetings. In greetings in the name of our Lord. Greetings in the name. I will be coming from I will be coming from I will be using the King James Version and I will be coming from Genesis chapter 13 verses 14 to 15. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from, from him, lift up now their eyes and look from the place where thou art. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thou see forever. May the Lord add blessing to the reader, hearer, and doer of his words. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity again to speak praises to your name. We thank you for the technology uh, that allows us to continue to praise your name even during this pandemic. We ask that you be with us today as we go into our service. Uh, we thank all of those for joining us today. Uh, we ask you to bless each and every one under the sound of our voice and on this Zoom broadcast. We ask you to bless our leaders of our church, bless our volunteers, bless all of those who have a mind to work for the uplifting of your kingdom. Lord, we just ask you to come in right now, take a seat and let us love on you. In Jesus' powerful name, we ask this prayer. Amen. 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 We thank the Lord for the prayer and the scripture this morning. You know, as we come this morning, let us just pour out our all to God because he is worthy to be praised. We serve a mighty God, a God who deserves all the glory, all the praise, the honor and the thanks. So open your hearts and your mind this morning and give God the praise. You may not be feeling well in your body this morning. You may be feeling some aches and pains, but no matter what, the word of God said in everything, we ought to give thanks. So we could give God all the praise and the glory this morning and forget about everything else that's happening around you. Forget about yesterday. Forget about the past. Forget about what's going to happen later in the day. God is in control. Let him be in control of everything. Thing. We're here this morning to praise him. So let's 
praise him. Amen. Let's worship him. Let's give him the praise that's due to his name. To God be all the glory. Amen. At this time, we will continue to worship the Lord. We will have Brother Treshawn Sharp to come with the statement of faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm the righteousness in Christ Jesus. I have a right to every promise in the Bible. I walk the path for righteousness that requires faith. For Hebrews 11, 6 read, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Amen. Amen. And indeed, that's what we stand on word of faith. We stand on that statement of faith because we believe what God said in his word. We believe that everything God promised us in the Bible belongs to us. We strongly believe that. And that's the word of faith statement that we stand on. Amen. We believe God's word. We have no doubt that God will do what he said he will do. So that is why we stand on that statement of faith here at the word of faith church. Amen. And, and as we continue to worship the Lord this morning, I want to thank God for all he has done for us so far and all he will continue to do. Amen. Because we're expecting to receive from the Lord this morning. Are you expecting to receive anything from the Lord this morning? I trust you are expecting to receive. If not, get your hearts and minds ready to receive because the table will be spread this morning. It's up to you whether you're going to eat or not. Amen. You cannot come to all you can eat and leave hungry. It's up to you. This morning, the table will be spread and we will be served the word of God through our pastor, Dr. Napoleon Bradford. And at this time, I want to welcome you and introduce to some and present to others our pastor, Dr. Napoleon Bradford, as he come forth this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Amen, amen, amen. It listen, just take a minute and let's give God praise. It's a beautiful second Sunday. Let's give God praise. Man, listen, I, I just want to take some time and just tell God thank you. God has been so good and God is so deserving of our praise. So just pause and praise right there where you are. Just pause and praise. Oh man, oh man. Oh man, we're so excited about today and I wanna to just take a minute and thank you all for being with us today. I wanna to thank Elder Edith David for being an amazing worship leader. I wanna thank Minister Thomasina Armwood for reading the scripture and Minister Tyrone Armwood for giving us and leading us to the altar, to the throne of grace and prayer. I wanna thank Brother Treshawn Sharp for the statement of faith. I wanna thank Holy Hands for being with us and I'm just so excited about all God is doing for us this month as we start this new series, All in the Family, All in the Family. We're gonna be looking at family dynamics in the month of April, family dynamics in the month of April. So just get ready, right? So let's go ahead and jump on in based on that scripture that was read so eloquently in your hearing from Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 and 15. It says, and the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward, for the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him. For the next couple of minutes, I, I want to preach from the thought, after the Lot is gone. <laughs> after the Lot is gone. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We celebrate you. We praise you. God, as we prepare to be better equipped to serve you, we ask that you remove the lots, whatever that is that is keeping us from our best self, whatever it is, whoever it is, remove them from our lives so that we have no reason not to get the best you have prepared for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 After the lot is gone. This, this is... Sunday, 
right? And uh, uh, last week, we got a chance to watch the verses between the Isley brothers and the elements, earth, wind, and fire. And, and, and even though Steve Harvey talked a whole lot, uh, most of us flashed back in our minds to the time we first heard some of those amazing hits. Who's that lady, right? We flashed back, September, right? Serpentine fire. But there was one song that stood out to me. And as I was preparing for this message, it ministered to me. It was a song written by Dave Foster in 1979 produced by Maurice White and performed by Earth, Wind and & Fire. And it was called After the Love is Gone. Now, 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 now you may not know it. So let, let me just allow you to, allow me to refresh your memory. It says, for a while, the love was all we could do. We were young and we knew and our eyes were alive. Deep inside, we knew our love was true for a while. We paid no mind to the past. We knew love would last every night. Something right would invite us to begin the dance. Something happened along the way. What used to be happy was sad. Something happened along the way. And yesterday was all we had. Here's the chorus. And oh, after the love has gone. How could you lead me on and not let me stay around? Oh, 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 after the love is gone. What used to be right is wrong. Can love that's lost be found? And I don't know about you, but as I heard those lyrics, it led me to the text where Lot, who's the nephew of Abram, is now forced to separate from Abram. And even though it was probably painful in the separation, the text tells us that something happens after the lot is gone. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, uh, I know many of you might have tuned me out because you thought I was going to the club, but I'm not going to the club. I'm in the text. The text says right there that, and the Lord said to Abram, after Lot has separated. Well, 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 maybe, possibly, you are, um, possibly you are missing it because you don't know who Lot is, who or what Lot is. Well, well, first of all, anytime your flesh or family gets in the way of your faith, that's a lot. If you remember the story, God spoke to Abram in Genesis chapter 12 and told Abram to leave his father's house, leave all that was familiar and go to a place where God was sending him. Verse four says, and Abram left and took Lot with him. And part of our lots come from our inability to walk in faith but to constantly walk in flesh or be led astray by family. So, so whatever gets in the way of your faith, that's your lot. But not only that, not only that, any substitution you seek for the sake of something you're missing, that's your lot. Any substitution you seek. Well, what do I mean? Well, well if you know the story, and go back to Genesis chapter 11, you find out that Sarai, Abram's wife, was barren, meaning she was childless. So Lot then became her substitution for the child she couldn't have. And sometimes our lots develop because they're replacing something that we have been without. Ah, but it's still a lot. Here's the third thing. Anything you're committed to, but can conveniently disconnect from when needed, that's lot. Oh, okay. Okay. Text says in verse four of chapter 12, that lot went with them. But when famine came and they went to Egypt, 
The text doesn't mention Lot because Lot was left behind. See, uh, sometimes what we pretend to be precious to us is really a show. And if we can easily put it down, then it really isn't as precious to us. And it's a lot. OK, what do I mean? Um, so, so sometimes this false sense of holiness or this false sense of spirituality and religion. Right. If we can lay it down easily, if I if I can worship with you Sunday, but then cuss you out on Tuesday, that, that's a lot. That, that, that's a lot. That that is a false sense of something that you pretended to be so connected to. Here's the next thing, though. What, what else is lot? Here's the next thing. Anyone that shows back up after you have survived something that they separated from you for, that's lot. Oh, okay, okay. So, 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 Lot's not with them in Egypt, but as soon as they come out with Egypt with riches, Lot shows back up. Ah, and you got to be careful about those people that aren't with you in the struggle, but show up after you survive. Those those people who aren't with you in the struggle, but can find themselves back when you're a success. That's Lot. Okay, okay. Maybe that's not your Lot. Let me let me see if I can push it. Here, here's the next thing. Um. Any person that picks and chooses the parts of your life they want to participate in, that's lot. Any person that picks and chooses, right? So what we find in chapter 13, verse 5, we find that Lot, too, has wealth in camels, which means Lot is older, which means maybe Abram didn't leave Lot behind in Egypt. Maybe Lot chose not to go because of the chance of conflict. See, if 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 a person is really your friend and ride or die, they're not going to leave when times get tough. They're not going to separate from you when the going gets rough. They're going to be with you, ride or die. But if they can pick up and pick and choose what parts to participate in, then guess what? That's your lot. That, that's your lot. Here's the next identifier. Any person who begins to groan in the presence of growth is a lot. OK, what do I mean? Text says that the land once Lot brought his stuff and Abram had accumulated stuff from Egypt. The text says that the lot was no that the land was no longer large enough to support them. And there began to be conflict. And I, I, I want to suggest that anytime your circle starts groaning because of your growth, anytime they start complaining because you quote unquote have changed, that, that's lot. <laughs> you you, you want to identify lot? Let, let, let you get a promotion. And all of a sudden, they don't want to hang around. Let, let you get a new car. And all of a sudden, you become their topic of gossip. Let you get a new degree or a new boo. And all of a sudden, they don't want to deal with you anymore. That's lot. If they groan because of your growth, that's lot. So I wanted you to understand what makes lot, who makes lot, so that we can now answer the big question of the day. How do you get your lots? to leave you alone. That, that's really the question. All the other stuff was just setting it up. The question is, how do we get our lots to leave us alone? Here, here, here's the first way. The first way you get your lot to leave you alone is you can't turn a blind eye to the turmoil, but you have to seek transformation. You, 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 you can't turn a blind eye. The text says in verse seven of chapter 13, and there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. Verse eight says, so Abram said to Lot. OK, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. I, I need you to catch this. The text says that. There was some strife. The text says that there was some strife. 
And it was noticeable by the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And as a result, Abram had to address it. See, sometimes lots get to run out of control because we're afraid to seek transformation and we turn a blind eye. In other words, we ignore it thinking it's going to go away. When the reality is, you can't turn a blind eye to the turmoil because other people see the turmoil. Okay, let me catch this. Don't, don't think just because you're not saying something about the problem that there aren't other people whispering about the problem in their own conversations. But the reality is if you turn a blind eye, you lead lot to get out of control. Here's the second thing. You can't be so afraid of the after effects that you don't address it. The text says Abram spoke to Lot. In other words, Abram didn't worry about how Sarai was going to feel. Abram didn't worry about the tension that may come from his other family members. Abram understood that Lot was causing turmoil in the camp. And as a result, Abram spoke up. And I, I just need you to understand that there are some situations that you can't let slide under the rug. There are some situations that you can't worry about how they're going to take it. Uh, isn't that uh, 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 woman to woman? I don't know how you're going to take this, whether you're going to be cool or whether you're going to come out of a bag on me. You can't worry about it. If it needs to be addressed, it needs to be addressed. He, 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 here's, here's number three. You have to be secure enough to say stop. You have to be secure enough to say stop. The text says Abram spoke to Lot. Now, now, now this, this is serious because Abram had to remember who he was. Like, not only was he the wife of Sarai, I mean, the husband of Sarai, but he was also the uncle of Lot. He was the patriarch. He was the person in charge. He was the leader. Lot was with Abram. Abram was not with Lot. And so Abram had to be secure enough in understanding that his position put him over or in charge of or the leader of the whole group. And you can't let one person cause an issue that potentially could tear up the whole group. Oh, man, I need you to hear that. You, you, you can't because in your role as leader, you have to do what's best for the whole. And sometimes what's best for the whole is letting the loose end, letting the lot go. Woo, God. Sometimes you got to let the lot go to save the life of the group. Woo, God. Here's number four. In your course of cutting ties, give the courtesy of choice. In, in your course of cutting ties, give the courtesy of of choice. It's right there in the text. Verse nine says, is this not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I'll go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. In other words, Abram, remembering that Lot was family, didn't just cast Lot out. Abram gave Lot choice the choice to make a decision based on what Lot needed in the future. In fact, if you keep reading, you find that, that, that Abram let Lot look over the lushness of the land and choose the place Lot wanted to reside. <laughs> Abram didn't command Lot go over there or force Lot to go over there. Abram was deliberate in allowing Lot to choose. And you need to know that in the course of cutting ties with your lot, don't, don't, don't force them. Just give them the courtesy of choice. That, let, let, let them control just how 
the story ends. Give them the chance to say, this is what I choose. But, but here's the last thing, and I'm done. I'm done. How, how, how do you get Lot to leave you alone? You watch God work out for your good what you thought you lost. Ah, you watch God work out for your good what you thought you lost. It, it's right there in the text. Ver, ver, verse, verse number 10 says, Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord and like the land of Egypt as you go to Zor. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east. Hold on, it's not over. Because verse 14 says, then the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes now and look from the place that you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward for all this land which you see i give you and your descendants forever hold on you ain't don't shout yet because here's the shout verse 17 says arise walk in the land through its length and its width for i give it to you okay 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 lot took his peace after Abram lamented Lot, Abram was told to stand up and look. And every place Abram looked, God said was his. Ha! Even the place Lot stood was still Abram's. Okay, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He thought he lost it, but God said it's still yours. God says, look out as far as as you can look that that's called the horizon but then god said start walking <laughs> and if you know anything about the horizon the more you walk the more you see <laughs> the more you and, and god worked it out so that in the midst of the complaint thinking he lost out god says i got more for you and all i'm trying to say is if you would just let the lots leave, stop holding on to the lots, let the lots in your life leave, there's more. God has more in store. In fact, God's just waiting for the lot to leave so that God can release to you the what's left. In other words, God had leftovers for Abram. God had some stuff left for Abram that God didn't release to him in Egypt. God, God, God released enough in Egypt to cause tension in the land, to separate him from Lot, because he didn't want Lot with him from the beginning. But once Lot was gone, God gave him what was left. And what was left was greater than what he thought he lost. And all I'm trying to tell you, is some of you have been holding on to the lots in your life so long, thinking that life can't go on without the lot. But you need to understand that what God has for you when lot leaves is so much greater than what you would have gotten had you held on to lot. With lot in your life, there's strife. With lot in your life, there's issue. With lot in your life, there's trouble. With lot in your life, there's argument. But without Lot, there's land. Without Lot, there's possibility. Without Lot, there's promise. All of it's waiting for you. The moment, <laughs> the moment after the Lot is gone. Let's give God a hand of praise. Let's give God a hand of praise. Listen, I, 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 before I even open up the doors of the church, I, I need to pray that some of us are able to let our lot go. I, I just need to pray right now. Just, just bow your heads. God, release us from our lots. Oh man, God, release us from whatever it is that is holding us up from receiving the fullness of what you have for us. Lot may have been convenient, but they aren't choice. They aren't what you want for us. Sometimes they're just what we drug along with us. 
But God, in this season, give us the strength to release Lot, not to wish Lot bad, but to release them, to release it, to loose it and let it be free. Because as long as Lot is there, there is some luscious, there is some land, there is some livelihood that we are being prevented from access. So I, I don't know, God. Right now, you know who they are. You, you know the lots they're holding on to. God, give them the keys right now to undo the chain that's holding the lot to them. Release the lots. Let them go. Let them leave right now, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, man, I see them leaving. In the name of Jesus. Listen, they may not be happy, but they'll leave. They may not like it, but they'll leave. In fact, Lot had no problem because Lot thought he got the best, not knowing that what God, what you had for Abram was far better. So God give them the peace to let them leave. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, listen, I don't know um, who needs to hear this, but I need for somebody. Somebody. Somebody right now, God, I need for somebody to accept you into their lives. It's connection time. And part of what we need, God, part of what we need is you in our lives. So maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice that has not accepted you as their Lord and Savior. Maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice that does not know you in the pardon of their sin. If that's you and you're watching right now, I want you to type in the chat or the comments, the word saved, the word saved, S-A-V-E-D. That is signifying that you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It, type the word saved right there in the chat. Here's number two, secondly, secondly, secondly. Maybe you've accepted Christ before, but you've strayed away. Maybe the strife and the frustration in your life has caused you to stray away. If that's you, if you're the person who strayed away from God and you hear God telling you it's time to come back into relationship with God, then type the word restore in the chat. In the comments, type the word restore, R-E-S-T-O-R-E. That's signifying your confession to come back and connect back with God. Here's the third connection point. Maybe you've accepted Christ. Maybe you are in right relationship, but you don't have a church home. You don't have a place where you can grow in God, where you can be connected or, or taught the power of God, where you can be loved on by the people of God, where you can participate in the work of God. Right. If that's you, then I invite you to type the word join in the chat. Join, join. That is signifying that you want to be a part of the Word of Faith Church everywhere. Intergalactic. Just type the word join in the chat. So if you want to accept Christ, type the word save. If you want to um, restore your relationship, type the word restore. And if you want to join the Word of Faith Church, type the word join. And if you type any of those words, text the word new faith, N-E-W-F-A-I-T-H to 84576 so that we can reach out to you this week. New faith to 84576. All right. The final connection point is through contribution. If if this word, if you're watching and this word is added value and you want to sow into the ministry of the Word of Faith Church, or if you want to pay your tithes or pay your offering or 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 support one of the other causes that we're participating in, then we ask that you give through contribution and you can do so three ways, four ways. Right. You can uh, give through Givelify by searching for the Word of Faith Church 
Riverdale, Maryland. You can also use Raise Mobile by going to www.raisemobile.com backslash WOFC, or you can uh, go to Cash App and do Word of Faith CJC, or you can mail it in to Word of Faith Church, 6001 66th Avenue, Suite 101, Riverdale, Maryland, 20737. All of those options, all of those options are ways you can give and contribute to the ministry of the Word of Faith Church of Jesus Christ everywhere. All right, we thank you for worshiping with us. We're gonna put that giving information at the bottom. So if you still need a moment to give, you can. Listen, listen, um, tomorrow is the second, this is the Monday after the second Sunday. So we will have our ministry leaders meeting tomorrow at seven o'clock. All ministry leaders, please be with us. Also, um, listen to the announcements. You heard the announcements that Dr. Tammy read and please pay attention to the announcements that are gonna be in your announcements at six because there's some very important news coming out. Next Sunday, we're back in the parking lot for third Sunday Park and Praise, back in the parking lot. And we are celebrating World Autism Month. So we're asking everybody wear your blue jeans, wear a colorful shirt to represent the spectrum, right? The spectrum of the spectrum that people with autism find themselves on, right? So, so again, that's next Sunday in the parking lot. The registration went out uh, two days ago. Make sure it'll be in the email tonight. Make sure you register for your seat in the outdoor sanctuary. We're so excited about what's to come, what's to come. So there'll be some major announcements coming out this Thursday, um, especially as it relates to our praise team. I know y'all have been practicing at home, practicing in the shower, practicing in the car, and it's time for us to get better, get better, get better, get better, and get practicing. We have, God wants to use our voices, so please listen. Can't wait, can't wait to hear and announce that on Thursday, so just get ready. Listen, we thank you so much for worshiping with us. We're gonna bless the offering. We're gonna say our good word, and we're going to recite Romans 8, 38 and 39. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you. God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you through our giving. God, bless the offering. Bless every seed that was sown, every tithe that was given, every offering or contribution that was made. Replenish it and multiply it. And then, God, let it be used for your purpose. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Here's your good word. Many of us are holding on to some lots, some some people and things that are interfering with what God has for us. First, we have to identify them. And secondly, we have to address them. No love is lost, but there is stuff that God is waiting to release to us after the lots is gone. Let's recite Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither life nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Listen, we love you. We thank you for worshiping with us. We uh, look forward to seeing you this week. Blessings to you. To God be the glory. Have an amazing day. Goodbye.